Okay, so first question, and we'll get right into it. What is EVALI? Uh, EVALI is an acronym for e-cigarette or vaping associated lung injury. The term was coined by the CDC after an outbreak of lung injuries in late 2019 that appeared to be linked to patients having a history of vaping nicotine, THC, or both. The vast majority of patients with EVALI had non-fatal symptoms, including shortness of breath, chest pain, cough, nausea, vomiting, fever, and weight loss. Studies showed that most people who died already had pre-existing conditions and risk factors such as age, obesity, um, diabetes, or CVD, uh, cardiovascular disease, or COPD. As of February 18, 2020, a total of 2,807 hospitalized EVALI cases were reported to the CDC, including 68 de deaths. Okay, when and where was the outbreak? Uh, the first cluster of cases was identified in southeastern Wisconsin on August 1st, uh, 2019, quickly followed by more cases in northern Illinois. The CDC subsequently received reports from all 50 states, D.C., Puerto Rico, and U.S. Virgin Islands. The outbreak peaked in the U.S. in mid-September 2019 and then declined significantly in the following months. CDC has not updated its case report since February of 2020. However, in some states, they are still reporting occasional cases. For example, local health departments in California have reported 39 cases with one death since March of 2020. Uh, very few cases occurred outside of the USA with 19 uh, cases reported to the Public Health Agency of Canada, one in Belgium, and one in France. WHO's advisory committee on the outbreak also pointed to isolated cases in Japan, Mexico, and the United Kingdom, though some of these reports predate the description of EVALI, meaning they were basically before they were calling it EVALI. So how is EVALI diagnosed? Uh, there is no single test for EVALI. It is what's known as a diagnosis of exclusion, which means that a doctor will conduct tests to rule out other potential diseases and conditions. It can be challenging because the symptoms are similar to those of other respiratory diseases like pneumonia, uh, seasonal flu, and even COVID. A doctor will begin their diagnosis by asking about vaping within the past three months and whether the product contained nicotine, THC, or both. A chest x-ray or CT scan is usually necessary for diagnosis and will show hazy looking spots called opacities in the lungs. What caused Evali? In late August 2019, the cannabis publication Leafly published an investigative report on the practice of using vitamin E acetate a thick substance that had recently become popular with illicit THC vape manufacturers as a cutting or diluting agent. The viscosity of vitamin E acetate hid from consumers that the THC oil had been diluted, allowing manufacturers to charge high prices for a less pure product. Soon after the Leafly article was published on September 6th, the FDA issued a statement warning consumers to stop using vaping products containing THC and vaping products of any kind that were obtained off the street or from unknown sources. On the same day, the CDC uh, was still recommending individuals consider not using e-cigarettes. A month later, in November 2019, the CDC finally announced that CDC's Peter Briss and the Lung Injury Response Team had identified the chemical compound responsible for the outbreak. That's a quote from the CDC. And ironically, they later received an award for their, their work. Uh, after warnings about vitamin E acetate and illicit THC vapes were made public and the police shut down a huge THC vape manufacturing operation in South in southern Wisconsin in September 2019. There was also one, I believe, later that month in Minnesota. Uh, cases of Evali dropped off dramatically. Subsequent studies have also pointed to vitamin E, acetate, and illicit THC vapes as the cause. For example, a study published November 19th illicit, or tested illicit THC vapes seized by police in 2019, including products seized in Wisconsin Raid, and compared them to products seized in 2018. None of the products tested that were seized in 2018 contained vitamin E acetate, while all of the THC-containing products seized in 2019 tested positive. Because many EVALI patients used THC and nicotine-containing products, nicotine-containing products were evaluated as well. None of the nicotine-containing products tested contained THC or vitamin E acetate. 
Furthermore, in a study published in February 2020, vitamin E acetate was also identified by researchers in 94% of the lung fluid samples, again, this is for that particular study, obtained in 51 case patients in 16 states, but was not found in lung fluid obtained from a healthy comparator group. Additionally, among the case patients for whom laboratory or epidemiologic data were available, 94% had detectable THC or its metabolites in their lung fluid or had reported vaping THC products in the past 90 days. Nicotine or its metabolites were detected in only 64% of the case patients. However, to date, no nicotine vapor product has been found to contain vitamin E acetate or any other toxin that would cause similar adverse effects. It should be noted that vitamin, vitamin E acetate is an oily chemical that is insoluble in water, while nicotine vapor products use water-soluble ingredients, which makes the two incompatible. Taken together, the vast majority of the evidence points to illicit THC vapes containing vitamin E acetate as the cause of Rivali. Finally, why have nicotine vapor products been implicated? Although reporters, cannabis industry experts, vaping advocates, bloggers, doctors, and non-CDC researchers around the country raised alarms over vitamin E acetate for more than two months before CDC decided to specify the substance in its alerts, and even after that, the agency continued to warn that other constituents in cannabis and nicotine vapes might be at fault and refused to remove e-cigarettes from the name. Furthermore, language on the CDC Evali webpage continues to confuse the public by using the terms e-cigarette and vapes interchangeably, leaving the impression that THC and or vitamin E acetate is commonly found in nicotine vapor products. Although both nicotine-containing and THC-containing vapor products are both referred to as vapes and vaping, only nicotine-containing products are referred to as e-cigarettes by both the industry and consumers. At the same time, anti-harm reduction groups and politicians jumped on the opportunity to place blame for Evali on nicotine products, especially Juul, in order to pass laws and flavor bans. To this day, these organizations, anti-vaping researchers, and media outlets continue to implicate nicotine vapor products in the Evali outbreak. And that is your rundown.